this is a 570 in Putnam County. This and the other wells we're looking at today are all Oriskany wells. They were part of the Oriskany boom that occurred in a very small area in West Virginia between Elkview and Polka. It started in the 1930s and it went into the 1960s. This well was drilled in the late 1950s. The Oriskany boom and this small area produced over a trillion cubic feet of gas in about 25 years. This well is still producing. Uh, the problem with this well is, is that there, you can't see it because of the weeds. The, there's no secondary containment. The secondary containment existed for the previous tank, but when they replaced the tank, they knocked down the secondary containment. It's only about eight inches high on the river side. Secondary containment is required by state law. In this case, because it's by the Pocatilico River, we're less than 50 feet from the river, we're above the river. It's also covered by federal regulations. The regulations, the federal regulations require any condensate state storage tank, 1,320 gallons or more has to have secondary containment. This is a 50 barrel tank, it holds over 2,000 gallons. The state law requires any condensate tank has to have secondary containment. It doesn't have a minimum size. Secondary containment has to be able to hold 110% of the tank's contents. It has to have a rainwater drain. Okay, this is well 583 in Putnam County. It's another one of the Uriskany wells drilled. This again in the late 1950s. The tank here is a 100 barrel tank. It holds over 4,000 gallons. The moat uh, containment dike is inadequate for two reasons. The, the dike itself is too short in height. And the way the moat uh, containment is constructed is you dig out a ditch around the tank and throw the dirt up. That creates the dike. What happens is, is the ditch itself fills with water. Uh, the other problem here is about eight feet from the tank, not from the containment, but from the tank itself, is a perennial stream that goes from the hills down to the river, which is about 200, 300 feet away. Uh, so this is a violation of state law in that the, the containment is inadequate. You can tell that it has water in it often because of the cattails. When we've seen it, it's been half filled all the way up to, to ground level with water, so there, there's been maybe a foot of containment. Uh, because of the way it can reach the river, it's, it's also a violation of federal law. The, this type of containment is, is old. This probably dates back to when the, the, the well was originally put in. This is on a floodplain. The last time the water was high here in the winter, it came within about 10, 10 feet of the well. It's been much higher. Uh, the well, because of that, the tank is supposed to be tethered to the ground so it can't float off. It has the tethers, but they're hanging loose. They're not attached to anything. So if there was a flood, it's possible that the tank would be ripped from the connector, and the connector is only the, the pipe that it's connected to. It's not anchored onto the ground, and tip over and pour out all of its contents as it's being dragged downstream to the Canal River. Uh, it's, it's, there are other sites all along the river here where we have similar problems with inadequate containment, no containment. It's, it's a real prevalent problem. At least 50% of the wells we look at that, sh that have storage tanks do not have proper containment. Okay, this is the storage tank for 735 in Putnam County. 
were a couple hundred feet from the Pocatilico River. What's uh, significant about this tank is, is that there's no secondary containment in case there was a spill or overflow the material in the tank would go onto the ground and there's a possibility but it's hard to say without studying the drainage more carefully if it would eventually end up in the river state law requires that all storage tanks have secondary containment